Praise the Lord. My message today is it's time for the ladies to get down into the garden and a lot of you are already in your gardens. It's just that time. The message today is, uh, well, I have many different scriptures, but you'll see it's about, it's time for the women of God, time for the men of God, but mainly the ladies to get down into the garden and uh, prune out that which is not good for your garden. Let's start with Psalm 79, verse 7. For they have devoured Jacob, laid waste, oh, let me get this, uh, verse 7. For they have devoured Jacob, and laid waste his dwelling places. Oh, remember not against us the former iniquities. Let thy tender mercies speedily prevent us from, uh, for, prevent us, for we are brought very low. Help us, O oh God, of our salvation for the glory of thy name, and deliver us and purge away our sins for thy name's sake. It's time to get out into the garden, ladies, and purge away the bad fruit, the bad leaves, and it's time to put away uh, even eating wrong. Uh, my doctor had told me it's time to put away extra pastries. And I said, yeah, I've been taking advantage of it so that I don't get sick. So it's that time, women, to get out into your gardens and to prune your gardens and prune in your house and purge out any sin or anything that you know that God does not want in the child of God's life. Praise the Lord. That's Psalm 79, verse 7. Now we're going to go, praise the Lord, to... Psalms, I mean Isaiah 47, verse uh, 7. And though did, and though said, I shall be a lady forever, so that thou did not lay these things to thy heart, neither did remember the latter end of it. Therefore, hear now this that th thou giveth to pleasure. Now, there's women out there, he's telling the women of God, You're saying I'm going to be a lady forever. Well, uh, he's telling you if you're a woman given to pleasure, you know, watch that because it's time to prune back on this pleasure, especially if it's not pleasing to God. Doesn't mean you can't have a makeover and have some refreshing. And those said, I shall never, I shall be a lady forever so that Thou did not lay these things to thy heart. Lay what to thy heart? Neither did remember the latter end of it. Therefore, hear now this. Though that art given to pleasure, that dwelleth carelessly, this is God speaking to the woman of God, dwell carelessly and pleasure, that say in thy heart, I am, I am and none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Well, I'm afraid if you live long enough in this life, we know a lady that just lost her son. You know, these things happen to us ladies out there. There are those that, God forbid, they had lost a child. But I particularly know a certain lady uh, that Reverend Joy and Marv were telling me had lost her son. What a painful, painful thing. So in this life, he's telling you, when you boast and you say, I shall always be a lady, not you're not a lady if you're living carelessly for God and if you're just seeking pleasure all the time. And you're not pruning back your garden in Psalm 79, verse 7. So, he's, I, she says, I am, I am and none else besides me. I shall not sit as a widow, neither shall I know the loss of children. Well, if you live long and in this life, you're going to suffer some sorrow. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day the loss of children and widowhood they shall come upon thee in their perfection for the multitude of thy sores there are some that it says are living even in with just witchcraft just living wrong you know for thou hast trusted in thy wickedness thou hast said none seeth me thy wisdom and thy knowledge it hath perverted thee and thou hast said in thy heart I am none and else besides me it's time to get down, ladies, into the garden. It's time to go out there and prune back 
and clean up your house. It's time not to live carelessly as ladies and, and don't boast and say, I shall never uh, be a widow because that's not true. As If you live long enough, you might just be blessed to be the one as a widow. Uh, but we all are, you know, are not going to be a lady forever. But God wants us to be a lady for him forever. And this is how we can do it. So let's go to Jeremiah 18. Praise the Lord. And uh, here he says, uh, verse 18, 7. At what instant I shall speak concerning a nation and concerning a kingdom to pluck it up? It's time to pluck out those things that should not be in your house or your garden. Pull down. He can pull it down and destroy it. And that nation against whom I have pronounced turn from evil. I will repent and the evil that I thought to do unto them. You know, so God said, get out in the gardens, get in your house, anything you see that's not supposed to be going on in your life with God, pluck it up because if you leave it in God's hands, he's saying at one instant, uh, you, it can just, you know, uh, judgment go against your house, your marriage, whatever, if we're not living for God. And drop the bomb on me, baby. You dropped a bomb on me. Well, sometimes that happens to a lot of women because he wants us to wake up and God's going to purge the garden. So he's telling you, check your house, check your garden, get out there in the garden and take out anything that's not pleasing to God. Put away anything that is not pleasing to God here. And at one instant, I shall speak concerning a nation, concerning a kingdom to build and to plan it. If you do evil in my sight that it, and obey not my voice, then I will repent of the good where I said I would benefit them. See, God wants to bless us, but you can make God repent of the good that he wants to do for you because a lot of people are just living carelessly. They're not pruning back the sin. Amos, he said, Amos, what do you see? Amos 8, he said, I see two baskets of fruit. Two baskets and one were very evil. And was was very good. You, we got to watch what, what pleasure and what fruit we put in our mouth and what we prefer. There's some evil fruit out there. Evil adultery, evil thinking that God is going to allow you to continue in sin and uh, be blessed by him. That's a, 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 an a, adulterous delusion, a heresy delusion, a perverse delusion. It is not the word of God. You cannot live for God any kind of way. He, you know, there's times we come short. We have an advocate to ask Jesus to forgive us. But you will not just live any kind of way. Elijah said there was two. Uh, uh, there was a widow and there was uh, the, the other guy. And he, what was his name you said? The other guy was it, uh, and, and when David, when uh, he went down to the widow's hand. Any other, there was two of them and the man. And he knocked on the power of God, came to her house. You know why God came to her house? Because she was keeping the word of God. So a lot of people at springtime want to see the blossoms and the beauty and the flowers and the glory in your garden. But if we don't, what? What do we got to get out there, ladies, and do? Uh, let's see. That was Amos. Okay, let's go to Matthew, praise God. Matthew 13. Verse 24, the wheat, it's time to get the wheat out, get the wheat and the weeds. So we get the weeds out and leave the wheat. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. That was good seed. But while the man slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So it's time to set a watch. It's time to get out into your beautiful garden, into your life. And set a watch, mother. Set a watch over your children. Be awake in the Lord. We got to cut back on excess. We got to cut back on things that are too uh, living in just adult, the adult, adulging of the flesh. Uh, your doctor will tell you. Uh, you cannot continue that away. You women of God that know this, we have to set a watch, get out into the garden, ladies of God, and take back, take out of your house, take out of your garden, you what you know 
is not pleasing to God. If you want the blessings of the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Let's see. Thank you, Jesus. And, you know, he told Jacob that, let's go back to Jacob in um, Psalms, uh, Isaiah 47. Praise the Lord. Now, this is what God will do. Before Jacob was blessed, before he became a prince with God, a princess with God, he's going to have a tribe proven people. And there's a scripture in Isaiah, I think it's 56 or 50, where it says, He allows the smith to blow upon the coals of your life to bring forth an instrument out of you. He's not going to have any woman putting her trust in any man or even her arm, her own arm. God wants our trust to be in him. And so the enemy comes along and he's blowing upon jobs. He's blowing upon finances. And you don't have to fear if you are the woman that is setting a watch, purging out anything that is displeasing to God. You just can't live a shack up for any life and a fornicating life and a drunkard's life live any kind of way and say I'm the widow of God now God will forgive you if you repent and really give your life to him so but to the lady of God this is to the church the lady means the church of God he is speaking to he's speaking to the ladies and the lady meant the church of God in other words a church that we are to purge out, pluck it up, because if you don't, God's going to pluck it up, root it out, and overthrow your house. So I know you women of God and ladies, we don't want our house to be overthrown. We want to be praying women, setting a watch, what's going on in our home, going out in your garden. When you go out in your garden, there's all kind of bugs and insects. insects. So it's time to set a watch and pray over our home. So that we are setting a watch for the gospel and for God. So let's go to, uh, no, I think it was Jeremiah. It was so pretty. Uh, Jeremiah, uh, yeah, that was the uh, Potter ones. We already did Jeremiah, so we're going to go to uh, Isaiah 47. Praise the Lord. Just got one more scripture, but it's really good. And this is a word of God about women getting in your garden. And setting a watch and purging out. Why? Why? Psalms, Isaiah 47, verse 7. And thou didst say, I shall be a lady forever. and But thou did not lay these things to heart. Uh, and Jacob, he was saying, uh, where Jacob, he said, let me see that scripture. Praise the Lord. Find it real quick. I think it's, let's see, here it is. Um, we got uh, Isaiah 43:13, yeah. So we'll go. To, sorry about that. Isaiah 43:13. Let's see. Praise the Lord. Bear with me. Yea, before the day was I am He, and there is none that can deliver. Out of my hand. I will work and who shall let it. A lot of people are looking for a man to save them. They're looking for a job. Whatever you're looking for that you feel is going to save you. The word of God says there is no one that can deliver you out of uh, your situation. He says right here in Isaiah 43 verse 13. Yea. Uh, before the day was, I am he. Before the morning even rose, he's God. He was awake. And there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work and who will let it? Those said the Lord your Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel, for your sake. I have sent a lot of people, sent into Babylon and brought down all their nobles and Chadites who cry against the ships. I am the Lord, the Holy One, creator of Israel. Those said the Lord which maketh a way, what? In the sea. And pass in the mighty water. See, it's God. 
that will bring you out of that trouble see it's God that will bring you out of that water see Jesus the disciples begin to fear when they begin to see that the storm was raging and troubles in the land troubles in the land uh, the economy that we have people that are striving just to barely you know striving just to live a normal basic uh, life not even a high life and they're struggling just to put food on their table struggling to have work you know adequate work uh that comes from the lord a lot of men have lost their good jobs and this loss is to bring us to the hand of god that no one is going to ever save you or deliver you it's going to be the hand of god said so one waters and one sows but it's god that gives your increase so a lot of them even sold uh, many inventions or even good things, tried good things, but they fail because God has a plan for your life. He wants you to trust in him. He will be the one that will release. I, there's things being released and there's new things coming in. I had a friend that went through a uh, death and he said, Debbie, I don't know how I'm going to pay the rent. I said, well, you got to pray and trust God. You know, the Lord gave him some work and he was so happy today. He said, you know, God gave me the money to sell stuff and it sold. He Now he's so encouraged. He's just believing God for more. And you know, when his wife died, when his uh, person that was uh, pulling together with him financially died, uh, God is still a very present help in the time of need for the lady and the woman of God and the man of God. You just got to believe and have faith. And, you know, he wants you to still trust. It's my hand. He says, my hand that will deliver you. And, uh, yea, before the day was, I am he, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? And so, praise. And so now here he says in Isaiah 43, verse, we'll say 17, well, 16. Make it the way in the sea, the pass in the mighty waters, which bring forth the chariots and the horses and the army, and the power shall lie down together, and they shall not rise. They are exact. They are quenched as a toe. Remember you not the former things, neither consider the things of old. There's, there's things going out. You can't, God's, the former things are passing away. There's still some things that we're letting go of. But that's a good sign because God wants to bring in the new. Like you go out to your garden and you're out there pruning and you're cutting back. Because you have to prune back. God has to prune you back. And if you don't do it, that's where in an instinct anything can happen to your house because you must prune back. Like the doctor told me, I must prune back on my sweets, my pleasures. And so if we're living carelessly, we better check ourselves. Because God don't want the daughters of God to live carelessly. And it's God that brought and calmed the sea. They were all on that day, the disciples fearing. Though many miracles God had did before them, they began to fear at the raging storm of the water. But you know what? You can go into the water, but the Holy Ghost and the Word of God, if you trust Him, God will bring you out some kind of way. You may, uh, one lady, she lost her job. She ended up in a shelter. She had to send her kid uh, to uh, another place so he wouldn't have to go through. But see, when you got God, you got the word of God, God's going to bring you out. Because he says it right here in Isaiah 43. Verse, he said, uh, right here, Behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall, what? Spring, spring up, spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness, rivers in the desert. God will be your water, honey. God will be the one to refresh you in springtime. It is God. We we lean too much sometimes upon our spouses or husband when we need to be praying and asking the Lord. These men are carrying a lot of stress. And we need to be have a prayer life with God so that God can be a blessing us. You know, it says in the word of God, a fruitful vine is a blessing to her husband. Well, you don't have to go out and have a dozen kids. But if you trust in the Lord, then you're going to see the blessings of God. And your husband's going to see the blessings of God because of you having God in your life. He said, I'll bring the rivers. It's God that brings the refreshing. It says, behold, I'll do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth, you shall not know it. I will even make a way in the wilderness, 
and my friend lives in the desert, so come on. God's making a way in the desert. Uh, and the desert, the wilderness, the beasts of the field shall honor me, the dragons and the owls, because I have given water in the wilderness and rivers in the desert to give drink to my chosen people. This people have I formed for myself, and they shall show forth. And you know what? I said, you're singing a praise of God, Ken. God just from one... 24 hours, he was singing the praises of God. So I'm going to let you go, but I'm going to sing a little song before I go. Thank you, Jesus. So let's get out there in our gardens, praise God, and let's worship the Lord. If that Holy Ghost on the inside, moving on the outside, bring it about a change in your life. Oh, it's Jesus on the inside. Working on the outside, thinking about a change in my life. Well, it's that Holy Ghost down in my feet, and it's all over me, and it's keeping me alive, keeping me alive. It's that Holy Ghost all over me, and it's down in my feet, and it's up in my head. And it's all, all over me. It's time to get out there, prune back your garden, prune back the sin. Don't be living carelessly. That's even down to how what you eat. Uh, don't be someone given just to pleasure because God wants us, what? Well, it's time to set a watch. It's time to, you know, women of God, get out there, prune back because in Matthew 13, it says, it's time to get out there and prune back. There's tears. Get out there and tear out the devil. Tear out the tears. It's time to house clean, garden clean. And women of God, set a watch. Because you don't ever say that I'm just a lady and I'm a church. No. A lady goes through many changes in her life. And you will not be a lady forever. Because one day all of us will be a widow. And we will know that. But you know what? We come to know the power of God. He said, my hand is a mighty hand in the waters. My hand shall deliver my people, saith God. God bless you all. Thank you for listening.